The question to me is not, can we eventually at some point in the future recreate human intelligence? The question to me is, why would we want to do that in the first place when we can create something different? So it shouldn't be our goal to recreate ourselves. It, it's actually more useful to create something that's supplemental. And I actually just wrote a book called The New Breed that tries to challenge and break this mold of subconsciously thinking of robots like humans by offering a different analogy. This is an analogy that is familiar to us, that acknowledges that robots are different from toasters in that they can make their own decisions and learn about the world. And it's one that changes some of these conversations in what I think are pretty important ways. So if we come back to the baby seal robot, the Paro, Paro is not designed to replace human caregivers. What Paro is designed to replace is animal therapy in contexts where we can't use real animals for reasons of health and hygiene and safety, but we can use the robot and it works because people will consistently treat the robot more like an animal than a device. And it's not just in the social robotics context. If you think about it, throughout history, we've used animals for work, for weaponry, for companionship. We domesticated them because their skill sets are different from ours, not because they do what we do, because they're different and that's useful. We've used oxen to plow our fields for millennia. We've used horses to travel the world in new ways. Here is the original hobby photography drone. In the early 1900s, there was a German pharmacist who was using pigeons to deliver medicine, which is something we're starting to do with drones in remote locations today. And one day he had the wild idea to put cameras on the pigeons to see if they could take aerial photographs. And it turns out they could. And of course, later the CIA adopted this to create spy pigeons. But pigeons also delivered mail for thousands of years, letting us communicate with each other in totally new ways. Now animals not only have physical abilities, but also sensing abilities that are way better than ours and incredibly useful. This, for example, is an official United States Navy echolocation device. In the 60s and 70s, both the United States and the Soviet Navy started marine mammal training programs because marine mammals have amazing echolocation systems. So they use them to detect lost underwater equipment and mines. There's some rumors that they strapped harpoons to them and made them into weapons as well. But the United States also used both robots and dolphins in the Gulf Wars to look for mines. Um, and in fact, the dolphin program is still in place because even though they've tried to phase out the dolphins and replace them with robots, the dolphins are still in many ways better than the technology. Here's also the um, original sensory equipment used in the mines, the canary in the coal mine. And I could go on and on, right? There are so many examples of how we are using robots today in roles that we've previously used animals in. But the point that I wanna make is not that animals and robots are the same. The point that I wanna make is that moving away from this constant quasi-human comparison opens our minds to new possibilities. It's a really useful thought exercise. It helps challenge the idea that robots and AI can, will, or should replace people. The true potential of robotics and artificial intelligence is not to recreate what we already have. It's for us to partner with these technologies and what we're trying to achieve.